Here are six mistakes people make when editing photos in Lightroom that really make them look like an amateur. I'm not saying that fixing these mistakes will make up for poor composition or improper settings, but they will give a final polished look to your photographs. I only know about these mistakes because I've made them myself, kind of a lot. So hopefully this helps you out. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you a quick masking trick that'll give an overall soft magical glow to your photographs. Okay. Let's dive into Lightroom. The first thing that people do that really shows an amateur photograph is forget to level the horizon. Here is an example. You can see the horizon is just not straight. There's a couple of ways to do it. You can go into your crop tool here in Lightroom, crop, and then if you hover down toward the bottom, it, you see that cursor will turn into a, a rotating cursor. And then you can manually level out the photograph like so. Another way to do it, I'm just going to undo that with Control Z. Another way to do it is also in your crop section. And if you go down to the geometry, sometimes it'll be closed. So if you pull open geometry and come down here where it says upright, come down here to level, and then Lightroom will automatically level that out and just kind of pop it into place. Just push enter and you're good to go. The second thing people do is max out the adjustment sliders, specifically in saturation and dehaze. So here's how that looks. If we take the saturation and move it all the way up, people are tempted to increase the saturation like this because they like how it gives the photograph just a lot more color, but it's not the right way to do it and it just looks very overdone. Another example is if we go down to dehaze, people will often take that dehaze and just crank it all the way up. It completely oversaturates a photograph. It adds a bunch of contrast that just does not look good. So when you do dehaze, do it very subtly, maybe plus 10, plus 15. Sometimes it even makes sense to just drop that dehaze, add some negative dehaze, and that'll give it a much softer look. The third thing people forget to do is to go in there and clean up any spots either spots on the lens or spots on the sensor. And to do that, we're gonna go into our little healing brush tool here, and we're gonna click on the Visualize Spots button. Now, if you have a particularly dirty lens or a dirty sensor, you're gonna see a bunch of spots like this one show up. In this case, we just don't have a lot. So to do that, you need to go in and uh, make sure your healing brush is selected, click your mouse, and it'll go away. Now, we have some down here. These ones are not gonna be visible at all. So we don't have to spend too much time doing that. But then we turn it off and the spots will be gone. You'll really notice them on a clear sky or a background that's just one solid color. The next thing people forget to do is remove chromatic aberration. Here's what that looks like. These green and pink or purple or red lines that show up in your photographs. Chromatic aberration is caused by a lower quality lens that's shot at a high aperture, so wide open and at a wide angle. And in this case, check this out. This was shot with the Canon 18 to 135 lens, which is a lower quality lens. It was shot at a focal length of 18 millimeters, so it was wide of an angle as it can go, at an aperture of f5. So almost as open as that lens gets. And all those things combine and create this effect. To get rid of it is pretty simple. We just come into our global adjustments here, scroll all the way down to optics and in the optics section we have a button that says remove chromatic aberration so we're going to click that and you'll see that it's going to turn those lines into more of a much muted much more muted color if we want to go even further we can pull this into photoshop and remove these by hand i'm not going to do it in this case because it just it showed up on that tree pretty heavily in the more prominent areas of the photograph it wasn't there. So this is a background tree. Could even crop that out if we wanted to, but do not forget to check for chromatic aberration and remove it if it's there. The next thing that gets overlooked or forgotten are highlights and blacks. A lot of times the whites and the blacks will just be clipped. They'll be too dark, they'll be too bright, and it can ruin a photograph. There's a couple ways to check for that. Up here in our histogram, we have these arrows. On this right side, we have this arrow here. If we click on it, we're gonna see areas of the photo that are overexposed turn red. If we click on the arrow on the left, we're gonna see areas of the photo that are underexposed or too black show up in blue. So to get rid of that, 
we can pull out our blacks until those blue marks disappear and pull down our whites or our highlights until the red marks disappear. And that's gonna tell us that we have a properly exposed photograph. The other way to do it is to hold down the option key. If you're on a Mac, hold down the option key. I believe it's the uh, command or control key on the PC. I don't know, I'm a Mac guy. Hold down your option and move your whites and it'll show you where the whites are overexposed. So if we pull it all the way up, it'll say this part of your photograph is way overexposed. So then we just pull those whites out until it's gone, let go, and we're good. Same with the blacks. Hold down option, click the black slider, pull it up, and we're good. If we pull it down, we'll start to see those underexposed areas show up. So we just move the dial, the slider, up to where that no longer shows up, let go, and now we're good and have a properly exposed photo. Lastly, a really important thing that people miss or overlook when they're processing in Lightroom is a problem with masking. So if we go into our masking function here, and in this case, we have the sky selected. So if we select sky and then click this show overlay button, it's gonna show us what part of the sky is selected. So let's say that we're processing this photo and we wanna bring the exposure down of the sky, pull down that exposure, and we can see that it didn't select the whole sky. It didn't get the parts behind the trees. And now we have these ugly glowing halos behind the trees. And you would think that people would fix this or notice it, but they don't. You'll see this in countless photographs. If you're scrolling online, looking at pictures people have posted, and now that you've seen it, you're gonna have a hard time unseeing it because it's everywhere. So how do you get rid of it? There's a pretty simple way. We're gonna go into our sky mask. We're gonna click add. We're gonna click color range, and then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna click the color that is just not selected. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna select here, and then Lightroom's gonna say, oh, okay, I messed up. And then it's so much better, especially since this is exaggerated and we're not going that low, we're going, you know, we do more like around here. And at that point, we can't even tell. So we've selected that, we fixed that problem, and we're good to go. Another way to take care of that is to not select the sky at all. If you're just having a hard time selecting the colors or the luminance that is not selected in a mask, don't even use the select sky. Use a color gradient or even just the global edits and make your edits from there because sometimes select sky is just not the right answer. Okay, your bonus section here, how we can create a mask that gives your photograph an overall glow for a nice finished polished look. Check this out. We're gonna go into create mask. We're gonna select a brush. We're gonna make sure that the size is, it's either all the way up or close to it. And then the feather is all the way down. So size up, feather down, flow and density at 100%. And then we're just gonna quickly paint over our photo. So then we have the whole photo selected. We're gonna scroll down here to our light section. And these numbers will vary a little bit, but I start with these and then adjust if necessary. Typically, I'll just leave them right here and that works just fine. So exposure, we're gonna go 0.15, enter. Contrast, we're gonna increase it by 20, enter. Highlights, we're gonna go negative 25, enter. Then we're gonna scroll all the way down to the effects section. And in texture, we're gonna go 10, in clarity, we're gonna go minus 25, enter. Dehaze, we're gonna go minus 10, enter. You can see what that's done already is, is it's created that nice soft glow to the photograph. And then to finish it off, we're gonna select the three little dots by our mask, select the three dots, intersect with mask using luminance range. And since we only want the highlights to glow here, what we're gonna do is pull out the blacks. And to do that, we see this luminance range bar show up. And then we can start to pull those blacks out just a little bit. We can do show luminance range here, click that little box, and that'll show us where those blacks are. And we can just start to pull them out just a little bit. I probably don't want it to show up on the beach too much there. If I uncheck that, yep, that's about where I wanna be. That looks good. And finally, 
the mask has an option where we can select how much of the mask is applied to the photo. Let me just pull it down a little bit, typically down to about 75. And you can play with it and see what looks good to your eye, but I would probably leave it right about there. And here's how it looks now and how it looked before. So here's the before and here's the after. Just a nice finishing touch to a photograph. Please subscribe if you haven't. We have more of these coming. Leave a comment if I've missed anything or if there's something that you notice in photos that just drives you nuts, we'll address that on another video. Thank you for being here. See you next time.